Well, it's Sunday afternoon. I'm in from my daily ride, and it's time to cook some ribs. So I've got my baby back ribs. I got my crown royal, and it's time to party. Let's do this. Okay, here I've got my ribs uh, ready to go on the grill. Uh, I, what I do is I put my rub on both sides of the ribs, and these are baby back ribs, and I rub them down really good with a lot of my rub, which has a lot of different spices in it that I kind of made up myself. I've been working on it for several years. I also use this on steaks. But anyway, I've got it all rubbed down. I've let the uh, ribs kind of sit out now at room temperature for about 45 minutes. I, you know, I want to put them on the grill at room temperature. And when you do this, uh, the reason you do it is because if you if they're cold when you put them on the grill, uh, you're more likely to kind of burn the outside, but not completely get the inside cooked. So I want to make sure the room temperature. Now when you when you feel these, they still feel cool. Uh, so don't confuse room temperature with body temperature. Remember you're 98.6, and if your room is 75 degrees, they're still 20 degrees cooler than you or more. So they're still going to feel cool even though they're at room temperature. And a lot of people make that mistake. They think room temperature means body temperature. So they are still going to feel cool. Okay, I'm going to go fire up the grill, talk a little bit about that. And I've also got my uh, barbecue sauce kind of ready to go over here. Now I've got uh, in here, I've got my uh, craft barbecue sauce, the only one I use. I've got some apple cider vinegar. A little bit of my rub I put in there, just make it a little spicier. A little bit of water and some Worcestershire sauce. Now I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to let it cook down because what happens, it gets pretty thin right now. But once I cook it down, I reduce it down, oh, about 30% and then it gets a lot thicker. Okay, so now we're out here at the grill. I'm using a Weber. Uh, this is actually a Spirit too. It's an older model. They don't make this model anymore. Uh, it's a natural gas grill. It's not propane. You can see I've got the gas hose running over to my wall. You can't see it. But uh, anyway, I've got it sitting right now at about 450 degrees, which is a little too hot. Uh, I'm going to cook these at about 350, so I'll turn these burners down a little more. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I've already kind of used my wire brush to kind of clean off the grill. This grill is about three, three and a half years old. And it's honestly one of the best things I've ever bought. It's an excellent grill. I'm really pleased with Weber. I've even got a video out there uh, of the day I got this and put it together of how to assemble it. Uh, they have newer models now that are very similar in size. Now what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing some grapeseed oil over this uh, surface because I want to lubricate it a little bit so the ribs don't stick. And that's all I'm doing. A little bit of paper towel got stuck on there, but that's okay. It'll burn off. So now I'm just going to put my ribs on and I always like to put them, oh, you know, the bottom side down first. I'll put those right there and then we'll put the next half a rack right here. Okay, now I'm going to let these sit for 10 minutes. I turn these every 10 minutes. And these should be done the way I always do it. These will be done in 50 minutes to an hour. Usually about 50 minutes they're done, but I'm going to wait and see how they look after 50 minutes, and then we may go a full hour. So I'm going to turn this down a little more, try to get that temperature down to about 350, and I'll check it in 10 minutes, and if it's still too hot, I'll turn it down some more. Here you can kind of see what the sauce looks like after it's cooked down. I cooked it down for about 10-15 minutes. You can see how much thicker that is. It just it barely even runs off of the brush now. I mean, it's just you can just tell how much uh, thicker it got when it reduced down. And that's how we're going to use it. Now I'm not going to put any sauce on uh, until I turn the ribs the first time. Then I'll start putting the sauce on, and that sauce um, on the grill. Uh, will that it has enough sugar in it will it'll caramelize a little bit give those ribs more color Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Let's check our ribs And definitely cooking in fact the heat's a little bit too high. I'm going to turn it down So we're going to flip them over 
can see they're getting a little black char on the bones there because like I said that rub has a little bit of uh, has a little bit of sugar in it and uh, we're just going to reset the timer now for another 10 minutes and just let them go before I uh, close this up I want to put a light coat of sauce on this underside now that's going to do a couple things it's going to add a little bit of flavor but it's also going to kind of moisten the the ribs keep them from getting too dry as they cook because I'm cooking these pretty rapidly but I'm not going to put a lot of sauce on the underside just enough on the sides and on the these ends just to kind of keep them from drying out because these can dry out pretty quick so we'll just uh, sauce them up here a little bit and then we'll close this thing up I want to get the ends of these bones here I love these little silicone brushes they're really great because you don't have to worry about them melting or burning or anything like that okay now let's close it up and let it cook for 10 minutes okay 10 minutes later you can see my grill is still a little hot so I'm going to turn these down just a little bit more see if I can't get her down to 350 okay let's take a look and see what we got here okay now we're going to flip these again now you can see we're getting a little bit of a little bit of char on there, a little grill mark. This time I'm going to kind of turn them this direction. And we're going to hit them with a the sauce. Now I sauce the top side uh, pretty liberally because this is the part I really don't want to dry out and this is uh, kind of where most of the flavor is going to be anyway. So I'm going to finish saucing these and I'm going to turn this grill off I mean, I'm not turning the grill off. I'm going to cover it up. And we'll go another 10 minutes. And uh, we'll come back for the next turn. Let's check them out. It's been 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to turn these again. This is the second time we're cooking the tops of the ribs. I'm going to flip them over like that. Once again, I'm going to do a light, just a real light sauce on the back side, not much, and on the edges and on the ends. And then we'll go another 10 minutes. Okay, I've turned the ribs one last time, and I put a good, heavy sop of sauce on them. And we're going to cook these 10 more minutes, and they're going to be done. I think these are going to be ready in 50 minutes. That's uh, less than an hour, so... Um, Let's let them cook another 10 minutes and we'll pull them off and let them rest. Okay, the ribs are off the grill. I've got them in on my sheet pan. I'm just going to cover them up with foil. And we're going to let these rest for about anywhere from 7 to 10 minutes. You don't, <clears throat> you don't want to cut into these right away. First of all, they're too hot to eat. And second of all, you lose some of the juices, uh, the meat, uh, the juice will just run out. True, any anytime you cook meat, you always want to let it rest for at least five minutes. In these in this case, these are pretty big. I'm going to let them rest about seven to ten minutes before we start cutting them off. And um, if you're having trouble with your steaks or your ribs being real dry, uh, it could be because you're cutting into the meat while it's still hot off the grill and all the juices are just running out. So we're going to let these sit. And I put a little foil on to keep them warm. And they're going to be plenty hot after seven minutes, trust me. 